Sports fans, do not miss our companion article on Vince Carter up at the site now. Take a trip back in time and relive some of his greatest moments. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. While Vince Sanity is slowly wrapping up his career in Memphis, there was a time when he was one of the faces of the NBA, dominating the defense on a nightly basis. And before we trace the evolution of his game from star to role player, I just want to remind you of our great friends over at SeatGeek who have the best app to buy tickets to sporting events and concerts. It's really easy to use, gives you a picture from the vantage point of the seat, and finds the best prices anywhere. Make me look good by using my code BBALL and save 20 bucks off your first purchase. SeatGeek is the only place you ever need to look for tickets. And who knows, perhaps you'll use the app and save money to go see Vince's last game before he retires. You win. As Vince Carter shifts into the tail end of his career, his role on the court has drastically changed, as is the case for most aging stars. As his body began to change, most notably his legs no longer providing the same lift, Carter began to exist in the offense on a completely different plane of reality. So let's examine the Raptors half man, half amazing, and compare that to his rather pedestrian role player status with the Grizzlies now. If you keep your eye on just Carter these days, you'll see a player who is relegated to standing around on the weak side while his teammates try to generate some sort of attack. Without much to do, he simply waits for a chance to light it up from downtown where he's struggling at under 30%. It's not always easy to find a rhythm when you've got the spot-up shooter assignment, having to patiently wait for your brief encounter with the ball and the shot. And if things work out right, his man will help off him one pass away and give him a wide open look from out there. In stark contrast was his role with the Raptors back in 2001. He moves much more on the strong side, getting a zipper cut to the top of the key where he was completely free to take his time, isolate, and light it up. On the same cut to the top, he continued his hot streak in this game, and you could bet if he did spot up on the weak side, he didn't have to wait long at all for his teammates to find him for the open shot. Vince still gets to post up a little bit when he's out there if he has a mismatch, and he's got old man moves now. Little turnarounds into fallaway jumpers, or a duck in and quick catch and attack for the shot at the rim. But you can see that he just doesn't have the same athletic gifts he once had, leading to an inability to beat his man and tough shots over younger, faster players. Every so often, we get a glimpse into what made him so great, but invariably, these types of moves tantalize but disappoint. But back in 2001, when he had his legs under him, you can see how he commanded the attention of the offense and had all the fallaways at his disposal. He wasn't a complete black hole down there either, willing to give it up when the cutter got free. And you can see how much of a focal point in the offense he was, as they're willing to wait for him to find an opening to get the ball and the green light to pull from anywhere. When his number was called in the post, the bottom line was, he was going to get his shot off no matter what it took, and he was feeling it on this night in the playoffs. On his drives now, Carter struggles to get proper lift to knock down his shots in the lane, and he also struggles to get by anybody off the dribble, but still shows signs of his elite shot making, albeit from a much lower orbit. To adjust, he's been able to focus on getting into the body of the defender to draw fouls for free throws a crafty skill that all veterans must learn as they drift into their mid-30s since they won't be finishing over anybody anymore. And on this drive to the middle, what once was a powerful tomahawk jam has been relegated to a quiet but effective finger roll. Compare that to his crazy hang time on his drive to the hole when a big man would try and step up to stop him. he just glide around. And with that quickness and explosion, he could get really creative with his finger roll game, releasing it from any angle. Even his floater game had some lift to it, as well as quickness to release before the big could block it. 
and he possessed raw power to knock you out of the way, absorb the contact, and still finish as he floated down the court towards the baseline. His three ball is still relatively intact as he's been consistent against good contests by the defense. And Memphis has absolutely relied upon him to get open somehow and get these shots off before the defense can close out. While back in the day, Vince could take his time, use a ball screen, then rise up off the dribble for the triple. But not much has changed with his mechanics as he got that ball up over his head in a two motion shot and just let it fly. While Carter got to dominate the ball in his earlier life, now he's forced to set screens and move off the ball much more to find ways to attack. And check the big smash he gets on the gorgeous cut. And in the open court, don't expect too much more than a meek layup as his legs just don't get him high enough to dunk with impunity anymore. Meanwhile, with Toronto, if you got him on the break, forget about it. He's going to make a poster. And he was able to conjure up some sorcerers hovering in the air, waiting for the pass before making this alley-oop into a reverse dunk. Wow. And to cap off his magical 50-point night in Toronto, he gets a breakaway and reminds us how strong, powerful, and explosive he was and how far he's come to now be that role man doing all the little things to help his team win.